Number one asks us to describe the transformation that gives the graph representing G from the graph representing F. So I've highlighted F in green and G in yellow on each of these graphs. And we want to talk about how do we go from F to G. So how do we get G from F? So we want to be doing something to the green function to put it on top of this yellow function. And so when we take a look at this one, they look like they're side by side. We just need to move the green function to the left to have it land on top of that yellow function. And so when you just move a graph, that's called a shift. Okay, so we're going to shift um, the F function a certain number of units to the left, right? So we're going to shift to, or not to the right, to the left, sorry. So a certain number of units to the left. So the way that I kind of compare this is I look at um, some points that are easy to see where they move to. So top to top, like these maximums or these minimums. And I just kind of compare how far did that move um, in the direction we're looking. So this point looks like it's about the point one, negative one. And this one looks like it's about negative four, negative one. And so when we're talking left and right movement, that's comparing these X values. So we can see that the X value changed. So we went from one to negative four. So that's a shift five units to the left. In part B, so again, we're moving green to yellow. So they've highlighted a point for us. So if we move this point to here, that's going to move the green function onto the yellow function. So if we take a look at this, okay, we're going to need to move this far to the right and then this far up. And so when we compare the X values for that right movement, we go from zero to two. So this is two units to the right and then from one to two um, for the Y's. So one to two is up one. And maybe I'll do a different color here so we can see this. But so when we compare, we're going one to two for that vertical movement. And then for the horizontal, we were going from zero to two, those X values. So we're going to move to the, or shift, okay? So both of these are shifts. So we're going to shift right two units and um, up one unit. In part C, so we can see that this that these two graphs are flipped over from each other. And so we're going to have to do a flip or a reflection. And then we're also going to have to move our function um, and shift it to get it on top of the other one. So we're going to need to, to flip it over the um, x-axis. So this is a flip over the x-axis or a reflection over the x-axis. So we're going to reflect over the x-axis. That gets me to what I have right now. And then we're going to have to move it up. And then we'll see that it lands on the other one. So then move it from zero to three is moving it up three units or shifting up three units. So reflecting over the x-axis, which flips it, you know, down like this, and then moving it up three. All right, then number two asks us to describe a way to transform each graph so that it goes through the labeled points. So now there's potentially more than, I mean, there's more than one way to do this. So I'm going to give you... Um, you know, one or more that you can use, okay? And certainly your answer could be different than mine. So in this first one, in part A, so we see that we want it to go through the point negative one, one. So one way we could do that is we see that it goes through this point, negative one, negative one. We could flip this or reflect it over the X axis, in which case it's going to do this, okay? and then um, it's going to go through that point. So one option is to um, reflect over the x-axis. That'll put it right through that point. 
okay? Then another one, so let me get it back to its original state. So then another one is we see that it goes through this point one negative one. And so we could just grab the function by that point. Let me connect these. And we could just move it to the left two units and then it's going to go through um, that point. So moving it um, is shifting. So we could shift it left two units. So not both of those together, but either or. Those are two different answers you could have for part A. Part B, we want it to go through this point negative one zero. So um, you can move any point from this graph. So I'm going to find a point where this graph goes through. Um, and so I see that the point for sure, or the graph for sure goes through this point zero one. So if I connect these together, if I move it um, to the left one and down one, it'll go through that point. Okay, so if I shift it from a point that I know it goes through and I shift that point to the left one and down one, okay, the function will go through that labeled point. So this was a shift um, left one unit and down one unit. Okay, part C. Again, there's going to be multiple ways you could do this. Um, probably the easiest way is to just shift this whole graph over. So just finding that it goes through, I'm just going to move this um, minimum value here. And so I could shift it right two and down four. So that's definitely one way we can do this. Okay, so shift right two units and then down four units. So that's one way you could do it. I mean, you and you can move any point that's on there, okay? So like we could have done, if I wanted to move um, this point, it's so like I could move this one. So this point, I could just shift one to the right and then down five. So from here, one to the right and down five would put me on there, right? Um, you could use a different point, like we could use this point right here, okay? So we see that the original graph goes through two, four. So now we would just be shifting down eight units would send it through that point, okay? You could do um, a reflection. So if you wanted to reflect it over the x-axis, so reflect over the x-axis, it would land right on there. Okay, we can see that this point um, two four actually landed right there as well. So those are a couple different ways that you could do that. Part D, um, so we want it to go through both of these points. So now we can't just like shift the vertex over because then it would miss this point or we can't just go to the right four and up two. Um, because we need to get through both of these points. So if we take a look um, at this graph, we've got this point right here above it two units. And if we look here, we've got another point directly above it two units. So we could just take this whole graph and shift it down two units, and then it would hit both of those points at the same time. So shift um, two units down. All right, then number three says describe a way to transform each graph so that it better matches the data. So for this one, we're trying to move this kind of blue graph over on top of the dots. And so you always kind of want to look for a spot that you can easily recognize. So like this max or min is kind of easy to recognize where that's at on the dots. So I'm just going to look at moving this point how far do I need to move that in order to get it here? And so if we take a look at that, we're going to move over this many and up this many. So we're going to move over one, two, three, up two. So over three, up two would get us there. So if you can kind of think of moving here and then here. So over three, up two. 
And so movement is just a shift. So shift um, right three units and then whoops up two. On this next one, um, so again, you can kind of look at these like outer curves, kind of trying to figure out where that goes. I'm going to move this point right here because I can see that that's at the point like one, one. So for me, I feel like that'll be easier to figure out where it lands because it looks like it lands here. So a comparable point. So that's an over two up one. So if I just take this graph here and let me separate these points. Okay, so if I move um, this graph, it's going to move it over to up one. We'll end up landing pretty close. And so again, movement is a shift. So shift um, two units right and up one. Number four, does the function F or G fit the data better? So G is kind of this lower one, F is this upper one. And so both of them, I mean, are quadratic. So both of them have that kind of parabola shape and are pretty good fit for the data that way. Um, but when we look at it, it looks like G is closer to most of the dots because we see it's really close here gets a little bit away from it here and then comes back and it's actually on top of like four or five points over here versus F is further away at kind of all of the places and hits one of the points kind of two. Um, but so it looks like G of X better models it because um, it's basically closer to the points. So in general, it's closer to the points. Number five for the polynomial function 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 28x minus 15. We know that x plus 5 is a factor. Rewrite it as a product of linear factors. So if it's a factor, we know we can divide it in to the polynomial. So let's do long division. I'm just going to do box method. So I'm going to put the x plus 5 over here. Then I put the leading term inside from your polynomial. So now we're going to go um, and figure out this space because this times x would be 2x cubed. So x times 2x squared equals 2x cubed. Now I'll be able to fill in this bottom box. And because I, that's going to be 2x squared times 5, which will be 10x squared. So then in this next box here, this 10x squared plus this needs to equal my x squared term. So 10x squared plus negative 5x squared would give me 5x squared. Now we repeat, figure out what goes here. So x times negative 5x gives me negative 5x squared. Negative 5x times 5 gives me negative 25x. Um, so then this next box here is going to be negative 25x plus what gets me to negative 28x. So negative 25x minus 3x gets to negative 28x. So then x times negative 3 gives me negative 3x. Negative 3 times 5 gives me negative 15. And that matches this final number here. So our remainder is 0. So the reason we do that is because now we are down to a quadratic here that we can factor. So we've got the x plus 5 factor divided in. Now we need to take this polynomial, okay, or this quadratic, 2x squared minus 5x minus 3, and factor it further. So this one um, I'll put in the box to factor. So remember, you put the polynomial um, diagonally this way. So 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. Then we multiply the first and the last number, so we get negative 6x squared, and we find the factors of negative 6x squared that add to this middle negative 5x. So that's going to be negative 6x and 1x.
because negative 6x times 1x is negative 6x squared. Negative 6x plus 1x is that negative 5. So then we fill these in. And now we take out common factors. So what's in common between these? They both divide by 2 and they both divide by x. 2x times what gives me 2x squared? So 2x times x gives me 2x squared. 2x times negative 3 gives me negative 6x. And x times 1 gives me 1x. Then 1 times negative 3 is that negative 3 there. So this is the rest of the polynomial factor. So then I would write those with my original first factor. Um, so the x minus 3 and the 2x plus 1. And then this is my product of linear factors. So all of them just have an x to the first with them. So they're linear, and it's the factored version of that original polynomial.